Cush Sovereignty, Black Righteousness. Chapter 6 Part 2 Heritage, The Bear and Mrs. Kaniasile Wanyanyekavu hadn't noticed that Mletsi had vanished as he stood there motionless as he thought about his people and all they had been through. How Sabaoth had not forsaken them because of their sins. He could hear his grandfather's voice telling him about the days of old, the days of great pain, and the suffering he and his ancestors had gone through in a time where Sabaoth was neither praised nor worshipped. He pictured that time, and a tear fell from his eyes as he grabbed his pen and began to write. This land. I woke up this morning, looked in the mirror, I couldn't believe what I saw. So I looked again and I saw that I was a black man. Anguished is what I felt living in this land paying the bills. While worrying if I'll have a J-O-B, tomorrow. Always chasing paper, but that paper ain't chasing me. Seeing brothers dying left and right. What's so funny, they are killing themselves. This is why I'm filled with sorrow. In this land? You say it's not my color, no, not my skin, what is it then? The news says a black man was selling drugs on the streets. Then they said. A lady was robbed last night by a man wearing jeans. What was the color of that man? They don't bother to tell in this land. My sister gets raped, yes, my next of kin. Nothing is said because of the color of her skin. A brother does the same, before you know it, he's dead or in chains. All the, the silly games they play. Only in this land. 400 years in this land. Oppressed, depressed, and stressed, what a mess. I've done all that I can to live in peace and harmony with the man. In this land. With tears rolling from his eyes, he slowly closed his notebook, looked to heaven, and said, Dear Sabaoth, whatever you have for me and my people, I'm willing and able to do. He stood there admiring the lake, before he realized he didn't have his equipment or weapons. The sun was about to set, so he quickly gathered sticks and dry leaves to start a fire. Talking to himself, he said out loud. Guess I have to do it the old-fashioned way. He took two dry sticks and rubbed them together until he could get a spark to start a small fire. He was blowing gently to spread the fire to the rest of the dry leaves until he could slowly pile sticks and then old logs. Taking about twenty minutes, he finally got the fire where he wanted it. The darkness covered him as his stomach growled. Then he heard another growl. He was confused because it didn't come from him this time, time. Looking up and seeing something in the bushes ahead of him. He didn't sense danger, but he was perplexed at what was happening. Something was slowly moving towards him. Wanya Nyekavu got into a fighting stance. Not understanding what was going on, he heard a voice in his head say, I don't want to fight or kill, I just want to eat. Wanya Nyekavu relaxes and said aloud. Show yourself. A black bear came toward him. Wanya Nyekavu said. Are you talking to me? The bear's mouth did not move, but he heard the bear's voice, how do you understand me? Wanya Nyekavu, perplexed again, took a seat and scratched his head. I'm confused. The bear sat next to him and was just as perplexed as Wanya Nyekavu. Then, suddenly, he heard the plants and trees as if they spoke. Nature truly has a voice, Wanya Nyekavu said. Now, how am I supposed to eat? How can you understand and speak to me? The bear looked at him and asked, You're thinking about eating me? Wanya Nyekavu said. No silly, I wanted to go fishing because I'm starving. The bear looked at Wanya Nyekavu, well, they're not speaking to me. As it ran off into the lake, he returned with two large catfish in his mouth, thirty minutes later. Dropping them on the ground, here, I caught one for you. Wanya Nyekavu stood there without a knife to clean and gut the fish as the bear ate. Looking at the bear, he asks. Can you bite off the head and I will do the rest? As he held the fish, the bear grabbed the fish, bit off and ate the head, and they said to each other, thanks. Wanya Nyekavu said to himself, but aloud, with raised eyebrows. This is new. Taking a while to clean and gut the fish without a knife, Wanya Nyekavu did the best he could with a rock, before finally walking toward the lake and washing the fish off. Returning, he placed the fish on the fire and waited for the fish to get done. 
The black bear was long gone by the time Wanyanyekavu ate his fish. Feeling content, he laid back and watched the stars and talked to Sabaoth. Everything that has life has a spirit but only man has a soul, I get it. Listening to the sound of the trees and insects around him for the first time in his life, it all sounded like a choir. Wanyanyekavu talked to Sabaoth for a while longer before drifting off to sleep. A beam of light cracked through the leaves as the wind blew, the trees had awoken Wanyanyekavu. He stood up and walked towards the lake, getting on all fours. He leaned over to grab as much water as possible with his hand and took a drink. Doing so, he saw, at a distance, something shining. Wanyanyekavu's curiosity got the best of him. As he walked toward the object, it was a skycraft, he looked around while picking it up and took a seat, amazed at the weight. I thought it would be heavy and I love this marble-like finish, he said to himself. It looks like it could go fast. Amazing. Jumping off, he started, he started inspecting the vehicle again. Um, looks like it has been here a while. After a few minutes tinkering with the skycraft, Wanyanyekavu headed south on Par Road 1423 until it turned into Homestead Road, but he was lost, for he had never been this far away from home before. In the distance coming north on Par Road 1423, Wanyanyekavu sees an elderly lady walking alone, headed in his direction. He waited for her for advice. Seemed like it took forever as she slowly approached him. Wanyanyekavu was eager to get back on track. Excuse me, I'm lost. I just got off Par Road 1423, and I see this road is Par Road 1423 as well. The sign here says Homestead Road, but that sign ahead says Par Road 2250, Transylvania Loop ahead. Please, can you help me? For I am confused and lost. The old lady looked at Wanyanyekavu. Son, I don't know what these people thought when they made these roads. She paused and shook her head as she continued. The Par Road 1423 is the same as Homestead Road, and up ahead, it splits on the right to become Par Road 2250 and to the left, Transylvania Loop. Behind there is Par Road 1423 and another Transylvania Loop. Taking a breath, she asks Wanyanyekavu. What is a Par Road, anyway? Wanyanyekavu laughed and shrugged his shoulders, I don't know. I thought you knew. The old lady said. It's nonsense, that's what it is. The old lady said, I'll help you get to where you are going, Wanyanyekavu, for I was told that I would never see death until I see the promise. Wanyanyekavu said. Are you an angel? The old lady laughed. An angel? Nah, child, my name is Kanayasile, but my friends call me Candy. I'm just as human as you. Kanayasile then started searching in her pockets and her bags. I can't find my specs, hum, must have left them, I won't need them anymore anyways. Let me look at ya, my eyes ain't what they used to be. Wanyanyekavu was looking at the old lady. He felt her wisdom as it glowed all over her. She was five foot tall, weighing 135 pounds, with silky salt and pepper hair that touched the base of her back, with an arch in her back that made her slightly lean forward. After her inspection, she said. Okay, Lord, I'm ready to die. Wanyanyekavu said. Die? With a smile on her face, she said. When you use an egg, do you keep the shell or throw it away? Wanyanyekavu said. Throw it away. This old body of mine has served its purpose. I'm ready, how about you? Gripping Wanyanyekavu by the hands, come on, let me show you your way. We're going straight down Par Road 2250 headed to Atherton until we get to Highway 65, where I'm going north, and you will go south. Let's get to know each other for this short time we'll be together. The old lady strolled, and Wanyanyekavu had to get used to her pace. You know when a woman is born, she is born with all the eggs she will ever have? Wanyanyekavu said slowly in confusion. No. She continued. Think about it, if this is true, you existed when your mother was born. Therefore, you should always take care of your women because inside of them is our future. Wanyanyekavu, shaking his head, said, makes sense to me, she said. It does. Kanayasile took two more steps, 
you don't have to remember the truth, Wanyanyekavu said. I'm confused, Kanayasal said, you must remember a lie to continue using it, and that one lie will multiply to stay alive. But the truth is true, and it can't change, because it's the truth. Wanyanyekavu said. Oh, okay, I understand. Kanayasal continued. Know this, the great deceiver will put a wedge between men and women, women shall have the power of men, and they will try to reduce men to the roles of a woman. She laughed, minus being able to bear children, but the men will despise the women and use them as sex toys, and gang rape them for pleasure until a war between the two shall break out. Not the war that one is used to, but a battle of the sexes. Even though the two are supposed to be one. Until they know this, the two will never be complete. The great deceiver has sought to separate Sabaoth's people by destroying the alpha males and creating a new creature in both men and women, but this one will be a great blow for many and they shall give in to succubus and incubus because of these lies. Remember this, Sabaoth is able. Wanyanyekavu was confused again. I don't understand. She said. Yes, I know many of the things you have seen since Mletsi left you were to show you things you didn't know or understand, but you will under understand all later on your journey, and this too will become light to you as well. She started laughing again, you've been one confused little puppy but all is well my friend. You were chosen to bring all people together not just your own but all. Now, come on here. They talked and laughed the entire time while they walked toward Atherton. Wanyanyekavu loved the old lady's spirit, and she too, was happy to have met him. The knowledge she gave him made him appreciate life and all the wonders it included within it. As they got closer to Atherton, Wanyanyekavu saw Yael in the middle of the road. There goes Yael. Kanayasil said. Yes, I see. Wanyanyekavu stopped. Hold on, you can see Yael. The old lady stopped as well, you're still a little slow, ain't ya? Laughing and continuing to joke around, she said. If you are of the spirit, you see spiritual things because you are spiritual, and see things of the spirit, by the spirit, and for the spirit. But you will learn all that. Besides that, did you know when I was younger I whipped you else but, in a fight? Wanyanyekavu said in surprise. You did? She laughed, no child. They both continued to walk toward Yael, laughing. Wanyanyekavu and Kanayasil stopped in front of Yael and hugged each other, and Kanayasil said, I like you. You're humble, kind, and spirited, Wanyanyekavu said, I like everything about you, you remind me of my grandmother. She said, you need to catch up son. I know both of them, very well. Kanayasil waved them goodbye and continued to walk north. Yael bowed to Kanayasil as she faded into the distance. Yael turned to Wanyanyekavu. Go without haste, to Transylvania, and there you will see your things, and a meal will be there to eat then go your way to Alsatia, Wanyanyekavu said sarcastically. I'm doing fine. And you? Seeing Yael was serious, he ran to Transylvania, where he saw an old abandoned church with a small fire and some food and his belongings. While sitting on the steps of the old church, he hears a voice, Upon this rock, I build this church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. He smiled, Let it be so, and I shall do my best not to dishonor you. A sense of joy came over Wanyanyekavu, and he felt a frigid chill over his body that quickly felt like fire, and he tried to say, Thank you but other words came out that he knew not of, a language unknown to him. He spoke this way for ten minutes, and then tears rolled down his eyes. As he finished eating, he noticed the position of the sun. He knew he had about three hours before the sunset. Therefore, he walked a while, and once his food had been digested, he ran the rest of the way to Alsatia.